you know what your window of tolerance is when it comes to your stress and how to tell what's happening to you when you get pushed out of that window and how, more importantly, you get yourself back. If you'd like to find out more, stick around. Hello, my name is Alfreda Manahan Vaughan of Metamorphics and I created this video series for people who've experienced some kind of adversity or trauma in their lifetime, whether as a child or as an adult, and they often wonder if they're normal in the reactions and how they function in the world. And I just want to tell you that under the circumstances, you're totally freaking normal. This video is about the window of tolerance. Now, I would have mentioned this before in some of my other videos, and any of you who follow me on social media will see that I've talked about this before. The window of tolerance is the space between our stress responses where we feel that we can handle things and that we feel that we can cope. So if we think of it as, say, two parallel lines with our hypo response on one side, which is our freeze response, and our hyper response on the other side, which is our fight or flight response, the space in between those two lines is the window of tolerance. And this is where we can handle and we can cope with stress and cope with things that come up. Now, obviously, the more stress you have in your lifetime, or if you're experiencing any complex stress, like I would have myself when I was younger, then our window can be a lot smaller, which means we can get pushed into our fight or flight, or our hyper arousal, or our hypo arousal of freeze, very, very easily and very quickly. And so we need to be conscious of that window and conscious of what's happening to us so that we have some kind of capacity to control it. So to give you an example, yesterday I was working on some projects that I had for work. And one of them I had started on something and then I realized I needed to allocate more time to something else. And so I chose to finish it. Now, one of my triggers is not knowing where I am or worrying that I don't have enough time to do things or not having a structure in place when I need to complete something. And because I just stopped, I wasn't aware that unconsciously I had triggered myself with a feeling of uncertainty and nervousness. And it meant that in the back of my mind, I had this feeling that I had forgotten something. And I know when I was working on the task, I went, oh, I hope I'll remember where I was when I come back to it in, in a few days time. But that subtle trigger there was in the background of this feeling of what if I've forgotten something? Now, what happened then was I gradually got pushed a little bit out of my window of tolerance. And so when I went and I left my office and then I went to go and do the stuff that I would normally do in the evening, cook a meal, I found that I was edgy. I felt a little bit nervous and I was quite distracted, which meant when I went to go do things like I was cooking a meal, I found I had washed the chopping board and the knife before I was actually finished. And then I had to take it out again because I hadn't finished things. When I was putting stuff on the, the cooker on the hob, I realized there were certain things that I hadn't done and, and I was disorganized. And that edginess stayed with me for quite a while. But because I was conscious of it and I realized, okay, I was out of my window of tolerance, I reflected on what happened beforehand. But I also knew there were things I needed to do to bring myself back. So I took some, some time to focus on things that would focus my attention, allow myself to relax. I had a conversation with my husband. I'm a verbal processor. And when I talk about things, I often feel better. And once I talked about it, I was able to put a structure in my mind of the event and the sequence of the event. And then I began to regulate and come back into my window. Now, had I not done that, or had that been something much more extreme, I would have been pushed way out of my window of tolerance, maybe into hyper arousal and so the hyper arousal response may be that I might have got angry or I might have wanted to avoid whatever it was because I was being too triggered so I might lose my temper and I could feel that there was an irritability in me that was surfacing but because I was conscious of it I was able to regulate myself and not let it get worse but on in the past I would have probably got irritable. I would have got potentially got argumentative. I would have then wanted to avoid whatever it was that was triggering me or avoid other people and maybe withdrawn. And if I was really pushed, I might have then swung from my hyper into my hypo and shut down. And so the hypo is the freeze and the freeze is the shutdown. And so in me, when I, when I experience hypo arousal, I become very, very quiet. I become very withdrawn and that's because I go 
go into my internal world. And when I'm in my internal world, I'm often racing in my mind. I'm distracted. I'm worrying about things. I end up thinking about things that haven't happened for many times. And when it's really bad, I end up in a place of shame feeling like I've done something wrong, feeling like I've made a really big mistake, worrying what other people will think, or even imagining that other people will think badly of me. Now, I've had to really work on developing my awareness of these processes, and I've had to use lots of my tools in my toolkit to support me to be able to stay in a place that's regulated. One of those things, which I've mentioned in another video, is mindfulness. And by practicing regular mindfulness and focusing on the present moment, I can bring myself back into a place of balance and bring myself back into a place of calm. By understanding that I do need to talk about things and finding people that are safe to talk with. So for example, I know my husband is a safe person for me to talk with because he will listen. He's learned over the years that it's best to just allow me to chat, to maybe ask questions or to just be there for me, that I don't need necessarily anything from him. And I certainly don't need advice or recommendations or to be told what to think or what I should do. And so that creates a safe pace place for me to be able to have that conversation and process things myself. Now, if I was with somebody who appeared judgmental or dismissive, then that would trigger me further. And as I said in the past, I've often got triggered into hyperarousal, which is shut down when somebody's responded to me in a way that, that triggers my feelings of shame. Now, understanding that we all have a window of tolerance is really, really powerful. It's one of the most powerful things that I've understood, being able to recognize that certain things push me beyond that window and my stress then becomes totally out of control. And recognizing when I'm close to the end of, edge of that window. So yesterday I was a little close to it, probably a little bit over it, not so far that I was losing control, but I was aware of the agitation. I was aware that I had a shake in my hand. I was aware that I was finding it difficult to sequence what I was doing and I was feeling quite stressed. And so that's, that's me out of my window being pushed across into my hyperarousal. Now, when I'm in the middle of it, if, if something like those things had happened, I would have been fine. Under normal circumstances, when something goes wrong or I make a mistake, I laugh or I very calmly go, oh, that's okay. And I sort it out. When I'm to the edge of my window, something that goes wrong can potentially make me feel ashamed or it can potentially make me feel angry, frustrated, or fall into the trap of blaming other people or other things outside of myself for the fact that I've made a mistake. Now, for you, if you want to learn your window of tolerance, then you need to start to think about what kind of things happen that make you lose your temper and how calm are you? And you need to then really think about your self-care. What brings you into a place of balance? And do you engage in that activity regularly? I meditate every day because I know if I didn't, I wouldn't be able to maintain my window. I have conversations with people who support me. I have my own coach. I work with people regularly who support me. I work with peer coaches and groups as well. I have supervision for my work. All of these avenues support me in being able to deal with things that are difficult. I also know there are other things that I need to do to support me as well. So that may be that I engage in activity that makes me feel good, or I give myself permission to take a time out and to take a break. So if you'd like to find out more, or if you'd like to work with me as a coach, where I can support you in understanding your window of tolerance and developing your self-care and managing your stress, then please get in touch. My uh, website link is below. If you'd like to subscribe to my channel, I'd be really, really grateful as well. I'd love if you've watched some of my other videos and give me some feedback. And remember, whatever you're going through, if you're responding to those things in a particular way, that's because you need to respond that way. Everything that we do is an adaptive response to help us to feel safe. As we get older, those things can become maladaptive because they're not useful anymore. But we need to be grateful that at one point in our lifetime, when we reacted in that way, whether that's angry or avoidant, or whether that's freeze and shut down, we did it because it helped us feel safe. And remind yourself that under the circumstances of your life, that's totally freaking normal.